Caution, avoid nasty paper cuts when looking at paper dolls. In my video about Sleeping Beauty merchandise, I showed you these Sleeping Beauty dolls. Specifically, they're paper dolls, and they were issued by Whitman, an imprint of Western Publishing Company, which is a favorite here at Tulgiewood TV because of their longtime association with Disney and the quality products that they issued, mostly publications. So paper dolls were a great fit with Whitman. I also already showed you an example of paper dolls from Whitman, or in this case, one of their other imprints, Golden Books. And of course, they issued all the Disney princesses, not just Aurora, in a similar set of paper dolls. And just to remind you, here's Aurora and Philip. Inside, there's plenty of costumes for these two. And on the back, we have Maleficent and the Three Good Fairies, really well done in the Whitman style. Paper dolls have long been a favorite plaything, really for centuries. The first paper dolls to be manufactured came in England in 1810. One of the best things about paper dolls is that they're inexpensive, and in fact, you can make your own, which would be very creative. And as I pointed out, that's one of the really cool things about this set is that you could decorate and color the costumes for the dolls yourself with the crayons that were included. But if you're looking for licensed characters, of course, you could turn to Whitman. Because aside from the Disney paper dolls, they also issued many other licensed properties, including movie stars, Shirley Temple, Elizabeth Taylor, Debbie Reynolds, and even male stars like Rock Hudson and Pat Boone. In the 50s and 60s, with television, they had tie-ins with favorite TV shows, such as Patty Duke, the Archies, Family Affair, and then into the 70s, they had Donnie and Marie and the Brady Bunch. Whitman even had Lucy paper dolls, not just I Love Lucy, but also Lucy as she appeared on The Lucy Show, and so many more. So today we'll take a look at some other paper dolls from my collection and hopefully we'll see a little bit of the variety. But naturally, we're including Disney. Whitman had so many Disney paper dolls over the years. There was Annette, Haley Mills, the Disney princesses, as I mentioned, starting, of course, with Snow White, and individual films like Mary Poppins, and even Return to Oz. And Disney favorites like Donald Duck and Daisy Duck were included. And here we have a great one from the 1970s when the emphasis was on nostalgia. The nostalgia craze had actually been created by Mickey Mouse in the late 1960s with a resurgence in popularity of the Mickey Mouse watch from the 1930s. So his 1930s design was in vogue again, and it's been used ever since, along with the modern design, of course, and some other designs. This is from 1977, which is when the new Mickey Mouse Club premiered in syndication. <laughs> this is even more nostalgic because it's looking back to the 1920s. We have Minnie all dolled up as like a flapper. And on the back here, we see Mickey with his ukulele or his banjo or whatever that instrument is. And these are really just so beautifully done. So here are the dolls. You would punch those out. And then we have the costumes, stepping out as it's called. So all kinds of wonderful 1920s era costumes like the fur coat, really great designs. And there's even a jalopy for Mickey and Minnie to ride in. And this, this great little hood ornament. I think these paper dolls are so unique, so I'm very happy to have these. Now later on, I'll show what to me is a very unique set of paper dolls. But we want to move on to a non-Disney license that Whitman had, which is Barbie, an example of a doll becoming a paper doll. So there was Barbie and Ken and all their friends, like Midge, Tammy and Pepper, PJ, Skipper, and there's so many other Barbie friends 
that we'll take a look at the whole world of Barbie in another video because that's what it's going to take. Now, don't tell anybody that I'm going to cheat a little bit because I don't actually have Barbie paper dolls, but I do have this Whitman Sticker Fun book and they're almost paper dolls. So we'll, we'll just use these because how can we resist them? They're so much fun and they are very much like paper dolls. So this is Ken and Barbie at school. Barbie is running for president. The art is just great with these. Here she's on the phone saying, why I'd love to. Well, what is she talking about? I should have mentioned that this is from 1963. Now remember, Barbie was only introduced in 1959. So this property was still pretty new in 63 and very popular. It's actually that Barbie is accepting an invitation from Ken to go to the school dance. She's getting ready. She wants to know what she's going to wear. Here comes Ken with his corsage and his dinner jacket, and the paper boy is throwing the paper, and poor Ken is going to get hit in the head. I'm not really sure why they included this little scenario, but it's very funny, and I guess they wanted some action in this, aside from people just posing. Here is Ken pinning the corsage on Barbie, and off they go to a dinner, and then there's just all kinds of other activities, walking their little poodle dog, listening to the portable radio on the patio. This is college, so they're headed to class. And Ken is a scientist, of course. And Barbie is studying, what else? Home economics. <laughs> Remember, this is 63. The unused stickers. Quite a few have not been used. And as you've already seen, quite a few have been. Whoever owned this in 1963 did a really nice job of putting the stickers in. And as shown on the cover, Barbie is running for student body president. So good for her. A non-stereotypical role. She's breaking away from that whole home economics thing. Putting on her dancing shoes. Ken tying his tie right over left. <laughs> Getting ready for the victory dance. Everyone has fun everyone, even girls. So there we have some paper doll-like stickers. They really almost are like paper dolls, aren't they? Because I think they're always shown full figure. Maybe some who had this in 1963 cut out some of the figures as well as the costumes and used them like paper dolls. Another non-Disney license that Whitman had in the 1960s. This is from 1965, when trolls were all the rage. Now, the creator of the troll dolls was Thomas Dam, really pronounced Dom, because he was in Scandinavia. He's the one that came up with the famous design of the, their very specific face, kind of wrinkled, the cra kind of crazy hair, the chubby body. Those were all his design. When he started mass producing the troll doll, which were called Damn Trolls by his toy company called Damn Things, there was a problem with the copyright. So other companies started issuing their own version of the trolls, including Wishniks. The Wishniks came from the Unita Company. So does that sound familiar? It might to some of you Disney fans, because in the late 50s and early 60s, they were a Disney licensee. So they produced, for example, the beautiful Pollyanna doll and the princess doll seen in one of our favorites, Babes in Toyland. Now, another name for the trolls were good luck trolls. So the Wishniks had on the bottom of their feet horseshoes or the imprint of horseshoes to indicate they were for good luck. And you could make a wish on them. Brushing their hair was considered good luck. And there were many, many costumes issued for the troll dolls themselves. So we can see some here, a fisherman, a king, a caveman, and a nurse. There are four paper dolls in this set. They have been all punched out in this envelope or folder type holder called a Wishnik House. <laughs> some really fun designs. So let's take a look at the dolls themselves. Here they are. There are two of the dolls. Here's the third one. And let's see, there's lots of costumes here, of course. Here's the fourth one. <laughs> I like their different hairstyles. 
and as mentioned, all these costumes. There are quite a number of them, like Dutch costume with wooden shoes. <laughs> Here's the whole fisherman set that's not even completely cut out. And then on the back, I think it's almost easier to look at the costumes there because they're nicely displayed. And we have the Hunt Nick, the Cop Nick, the Smart Nick, kind of a graduate, the Nurse Nick, the Mom Nick, the Dad Nick, the Cook Nick, the Tackle Nick, a football player, and more. What a great set of paper dolls that is and really helps show the variety that Whitman issued. Now, you don't have to be Jimmy Fallon to like troll dolls. In fact, trolls are very popular once again because of the troll movies and TV shows from DreamWorks. And yes, they are licensed from Thomas Dam's company, even though they kind of used the original designs only as a springboard. The DreamWorks artists came up with their own designs trying, I think, to make them look a little more appealing to the modern eye. Now, I promised I would show you what I consider to be one of the most unique set of paper dolls from Whitman, one of the most unique Disney sets, that is, and it's Alice in Wonderland. Of course, there are the crazy Wonderland characters, such as the White Rabbit, the Mad Hatter, and the Cheshire Cat. I don't know that I would have expected to see these as a paper doll set, but it's interesting because this is from 1976. Alice in Wonderland kind of had a resurgence in the 1970s because in 1974, Alice in Wonderland was seen in theaters for the first time since its original release in 1951. I really think since then, it's been included among the most popular of Disney properties. And so it's interesting because the dolls are on the back and you punch them out and here they are. You weren't expecting to see the Mad Hatter in his long underwear, were you? And the styles are kind of this groovy 1970s style. Here you can see what I'm talking about. Look at these patterns. And were we expecting to see Alice kind of in this pantsuit or jumpsuit type thing? No, I don't think so. She has some more, maybe more in character, old-fashioned or Victorian type dresses, like this party dress. And she's holding an unbirthday cake. A tennis outfit because I guess she can play tennis as well as she can play croquet. And look at this. You can even dress her as the Queen of Hearts or in this Cheshire Cat like outfit. So there's a lot of imagination here in the 1970s. Here's costumes for the other characters, all equally 1970s styled, and lots more costumes for Alice since she is the main paper doll. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at some of the paper dolls I have in my collection, and I hope you'll be with me next time when our guest will be Freddie Fillmore, who will be here to host an historical overview of TV game shows, including Gold Case, Beat the Devil, Pay As You Go, The $50,000 Steeplechase, and last but not least, Females Are Fabulous. See you then.